Hey guys, RPM here. Hope you're doing well, having a really great day. This video, I want to do an overview of the Ice River KS2 and also the Super Scaler K10. These two miners I just received over the past week here, it's just been insane. There's been a lot of talk about it, a lot of controversy. And so I just wanted to give you guys my thoughts, my overview of these two miners here. And uh, yeah, I, this is not to validate that, you know, this is real or not. I am gonna do further testing in other videos in this coming week here. I'm gonna give more evidence whether or not you guys believe it's real or not. And as well, I don't recommend pre-ordering this thing yet until we get further evidence of this being, you know, legitimate. And if the company itself will ship out these KS Zeros that were on pre-order that I know a lot of people have actually pre-ordered it. So whether or not those guys actually get their pre-order, you know, I would wait until to see if those guys actually get it. Because simply, this is a company that's in China, you know, they accept crypto and wire transfer. We don't know if the company is gonna rug pull. Even though they sent me one of these KS2s, whether or not it's real or not, I mean, I'm getting the yield here. I'm, I'm getting 20, last 24 hours, 31,818 CASPA, or that's about 771 USD worth. All right, over the past 24 hours, I've had this thing running. It's utterly insane how much that this is earning. But I got a lot to go through. Just gonna speak my mind as we go through. I'm gonna tell you guys my setup process. We did do live streams of this, the K10 and the KS2 and uh, we had a lot of fun but uh, ultimately yeah these two are miners that just literally came out over the last i don't know in north america that the news of these things over the past two weeks and so here we go i have these and so thank you to ice river for sending me one of these also t swift on discord uh, his buddy bought two of these and uh, decided to ship me one to do a review and so i'm going to talk about some trials and tribulations about these two guys and uh how i got it all set up and whatnot all right so let's start from the very beginning of unboxing these miners. All right, I'll show you guys the boxes. So the K10, okay, Super Scalar K10, which does 30 giga hash, apparently 30 giga hash at about 16 to 1700 watts. I'll talk to you guys later that it, it doesn't actually, it seems like it's doing like 22 or 10 for me. So I'll explain that later on. But anyways, there is a box just for the power supply, all right, which is totally separate. I'll show you here, it's a 2400 watt power supply and it only runs on 200 to 240 volt according to the specs which I'll put on the screen here we did show that in the live stream and then it plugs into 18 different six pin PCIe on the K10 okay whether or not this is an ASIC or an FPGA I'm not quite sure yet I'm hesitant to open it because it's really dirty it's a little bit rusty and this was definitely mined on for a couple months if not more so this has been out for a while all right 30 giga hash 16 1700 watts I can show you on the screen here but anyways then the other box was the k10 itself which right here okay so as I was unboxing it essentially there was a like this fan filter which was pretty dirty okay on the front and yeah as i unboxed it the first thing i saw when we were taking it out i saw on the pcie that there were a couple of burnt or yellow six pin pcie and i was like oh man that that's horrible so obviously they said that this was advertised as not new used hardware so that was the first like oh my god this is horrible you know a ten thousand eleven thousand dollar asic that's used and they're giving us some connectors that were burnt essentially or maybe just discoloration maybe not necessarily burnt if it was burnt it would be a lot more black i would say but it was brown as heat does discolor these over time so i that was something that i didn't expect but yeah overall the, the asic was dirty dusty and uh there's a lot of marks a lot of scratches on this k10 when i unbox it okay all right so the next thing in that live stream what i did we plugged in the ethernet, plugged in the power. We hope to God it didn't, you know, smoke or anything. And it didn't, right? It didn't. Ultimately, it started mining actually after about 13 minutes. 
and we had to use proprietary software, uh, which I can show you guys over here. All right, so apparently there are other models out there. All right, there's a K9 and like a K11 apparently, and then there's the K10 in the middle, which I can select with the software. So proprietary software, which there is no web GUI, okay? I can't just simply put in the IP address on a web browser. I simply couldn't go to the web browser and put in the IP address. So yeah, that's that's one thing I was like, all right, so there's no web GUI. And we had to use their own proprietary software to connect to it. We had a fun time because it was all in Chinese, but ultimately we got into it and that was good. So we started mining on K1 pool. And then I would say after an hour or maybe a couple hours, the hash rate did start dying down. Okay, so I never, I never did see on K1 pool. It never went up to 30 giga hash. It's only at like 21 at one point. And then all of a sudden it went down to 10 or seven or something. Then now it's hovering around 10 giga hash now, 10, almost 11 giga hash. So this K10 is kind of problematic. Um, I've never seen it at 30 giga hash. I mean, it was at 30 giga hash maybe in the beginning. So I've been told that all I have to do is like reset it. And uh, yeah, but honestly, it's been earning, you know, a couple hundred caspa a day. Nothing too crazy. You know, at 30 giga hash, I think the calculation was going to be about, about uh, $12. After electric would be uh, 10 cents would be about $8 profit. Okay. Or the yield would be about 504 caspa a day. All right. So that's, uh, yeah, it's kind of underwhelming. Um, yeah, having some issues with this K10 uh, specifically, and it's not mining at its full bore. Okay, so, but otherwise it does take about 16 to 1700 watts. We did verify that at the wall. Okay, so that's the K10. Just a quick overview of this guy. Stay tuned, another video, I'm gonna take it apart. Potentially, I'm gonna ask the buyer if it's okay. I do wanna see what the hash board is, and if we can see if it's an actual ASIC or a FPGA. Something tells me it is FPGA. When I did log into my Unify router, the controller did come up as a Raspberry Pi, all right? And uh, I'm just thinking that that's some kind of similar to a Atom Miner I've experienced before, an FPGA, it was using a Raspberry Pi as the controller for the FPGAs. And then when it came to the uh, KS2 Ice River here, my Ubiquiti router called this the Xilinx controller. So I'm assuming this is a Xilinx control board, very similar to uh, Bitmain ASICs. Uh, I'm just putting two and two together. That's my experience thus far. I'm not sure if Raspberry Pis are also control boards for other ASIC miners out there, but more so I've experienced it for FPGAs and not like, you know, Bitmain ASICs or this Ice River. Apparently it's a Xilinx control board. All right, so now let's talk about the Ice River KS2. Let's get into this one. So just talk about the unboxing first. Pretty simple. Um, it was in, I would say, subpar packaging. It, it was good. It was decent. Forgot to mention the K10 packaging was really bad. I'm going to have to say it was not thick enough. Anyways, the KS2 unboxing, just these two foam pieces and a single box. That's it. There's no separate power supply because it's, it's all in one, right? Like a typical ASIC miner. Then put it on my table here. And to my surprise, it was extremely clean. Didn't seem to be pre-mined at all. There was plastic all on each side. You guys can see in the live stream, I was taking out all the plastic and there's still a lot of plastic around, um, even inside the fans. I had to take out these fans because there's plastic behind here. I don't know if you guys can notice that on the camera, but there's plastic here, all right, that I gotta take off still. But otherwise, it was a really clean unit. No dust, rust, or anything like this K10. He heavily used, right, heavily used. But so this KS2, guys, going along, plugged it in, put in the ethernet, and right away, about, I'm gonna say under 30 seconds, it was already hashing at 1200 watts. Right now, what you guys are seeing is the K10 and KS2 together. You know what, I'm just going to uh, turn this off. And uh, uh, right now, we should see the power consumption for the KS2 about 1235 watts. You know, sometimes it goes up to 1250, sometimes 1260 watts, but yeah, after about 30 seconds with the network cable plugged in, it turned on. We did a test in that live stream and uh, we decided to take out the network cable and the power consumption was still there, right? The power consumption didn't stop mining. We did another test where we took out the network cable, turned it off, turned it back on without the network cable, and then it did not start mining after 30 seconds, all right? So whether or not it's some sort of like cloud miner, a lot of people were talking about, I mean, similar to like the jazz miner uh, that we did. You guys remember? 
I took my PFSense router and we placed the X4-1U on it and uh, it was ultimately not a, those jazz miners are not cloud miners, but it did take about 45 to 50 minutes for those jazz miners to ramp up. Now this Ice River, it took almost about an hour and a half to two hours to really show up on the pool. That's something I've never experienced that long, but over the past two days here, it's been pretty good at over two terahash. Right now it shows about 1845 gigahash, so 1.8 terahash, but generally it's been almost, yeah, two terahash, and I have been earning what I've been seeing here. But whether or not, right, a lot of people think that this is some type of, you know, that ice server could be faking the hash rate, but something tells me where are they getting that two terahash from? And if you guys look at a bunch of other mining pools out there, there's, I'm gonna say hundreds of other workers out there that have over two terahash, or even the one terahash for the, you know, KS1s, it doesn't make sense. That's like over 200, 300 terahash. Where could they be taking that hash rate from? And I looked at a bunch of hash rate rental websites. There is no way there's 300 terahash and it didn't add up to any available 300 terahash of hash rate rental. Like from nice hash was about 70, 80 terahash. And then we got mining rig rentals, but mining rig rentals, there was only four terahash rented. And I looked at some other ones, but it didn't add up to at least 100 terahash. So where did 200 to 300 terahash come from if it was a hash rate rental for mine specifically? So stay tuned. I'm gonna add this guy on its own VLAN and its own subnet. I'm going to plug it into my PSense router and we're gonna log all the traffic that this is coming out and we're gonna see where it's going specifically. I'm, I'm gonna do a video on that and uh, this week I'll do that really soon and we'll just see where the packets are going and then as well as, uh, I mean, I also changed the uh, settings, right, for my payment out output here, right? I did a security check, enter any of your workers' IPs. So, I mean, this could be my, obviously I did my IP and it worked, but I don't know if there is gonna be a cloud uh, cloud miner or something that if it is going to one worker address, which you can do, right? You, if you wanna fabricate the hash rate, you can add more workers or more uh, hash rate to one worker, right? That is possible, but I don't know, man. Two terahash, <laughs> that's, that's a lot. That's a lot of hard work. And I don't know whether or not that's going to make sense that this is fake or not. And I'm not trying to validate that this is real or not, but man, like I showed you guys, I'm earning like almost $800 a day on this thing. It's quite insane. It's really, it's really quite insane. But going along, I forgot to talk about the software. Let me show you guys here. Uh, so it's this one right here. Ice River also has their own proprietary software. Okay, again, there's own proprietary software, which, you know, I put in the IP of the KS2, right? And uh, on the web browser and nothing comes up. Um, if I use PuTTY, I can SSH into it, but there's a username and password and I don't know what that is. Anyways, this is the software here. Really, it was actually pretty easy to use, much easier to use than the K10. I mean, we showed that in the live stream already. I showed you guys for me configuring it and, but yeah, I'm earning just incredible amounts of Caspa and uh, it's, it's quite insane what, what is transpiring here. And you know, so to validate this thing further guys, I will try to see if I wanna take this apart and then, uh, or at least do the PFSense one so I can see how, what type of traffic is coming out of here exactly, right? Just to see that, I mean, but we won't know if this is communicating, or maybe, yeah, I guess if it's just communicating not to ACC pool, which I'm mining to right now, if it's communicating to other IPs out there, then we can generally then see that then maybe it's like contacting another pool or hash rate or something to send hash rate to this worker, right? Who knows? We'll figure that out in another video. I mean, that's it guys. I don't know what else to really talk about here in this video. I just want to give you guys an overview of what I've experienced over the past week here. Uh, with the K10 and KS2. They seem to be hashing, uh, minus the K10. K10 is not really hashing that well. Um, but oh yeah, I was gonna actually turn it back on. And, uh, but yeah, this one ramps up after like 13 minutes, but the KS2 ramps up after like an hour to two hours to get that full two terahash. So anyways, guys, that's it. Uh, that's all I wanted to talk about. Uh, this was quite a crazy, crazy past couple of weeks here. And, uh, but it's not over yet. I'm gonna do more content on these. Uh, let me know down below. If you guys want me to test something out further, let me know. Let me know. But uh, otherwise, yeah, when I checked inside this thing, it, it seems like it does have four hash boards. Unum heat sinks on each hash board. So there's four of them. And there's a red LED on each one. All right, so when I take it apart, I can see it further. We'll see how it goes. But I want to do the PFSense first. 
Okay, let me know your guys' thoughts. Appreciate you all. Crazy times ahead. I got some insane giveaways coming real soon, guys. Uh, since I received these, I oh, actually I had to send the K10 back to the buddy, but this Ice River, it seems like I'm able to keep it earning so much. I'm gonna do a lot of giveaways. I'm thinking of doing a lot of ASIC giveaways. So stay tuned. I'll announce one giveaway as we go along in the next videos as we go along troubleshooting and you know doing more fun stuff with these Ice River, I guess mainly. The K10, I mean, the K10, I don't know if you guys want me to take it apart, but let me know down below. All right, I'll see you all in the next one. Have a good one. Peace out.